It's estimated that the world's nuclear powers have approximately 10,000 nuclear warheads present in their arsenals. These weapons of mass destruction can wipe off millions of people in a matter of seconds, while its impact on agriculture is more likely to kill billions. Diving into the history of nuclear weapons, we know that it all started somewhere in the 1930s and 1940s. Even though these warheads were developed as a security source, things started getting out of hand when the first nuclear weapon was detonated over Hiroshima and Nagasaki in August of 1945. Since then, controlling the proliferation of nuclear weapons is considered an important issue in international relations. While the nuclear attacks on Hiroshima and Nagasaki are the only two examples where nuclear warheads were used in war, the nuclear powers across the globe were granted permission under a treaty to test their weapons. While most of the tests had no real issues associated with them, a select few stand out among the rest, either for their massive size or unintended fallout. Here are five of the most dangerous nuclear tests. Tsar Bomba, also known as the AN-602 or Vanya, was an aerial hydrogen bomb regarded as one of the most powerful nuclear weapons ever tested. It was developed by a group of nuclear physicists in the USSR, led by I. V. Kurchatov. It was tested on 30th of October 1961 and was set off over Novaya Zemlya Island in the Russian Arctic Sea by the Soviet Union. The massive yield of this hydrogen bomb was recorded to be a whopping 50 megatons, which, to better understand, was approximately equal to the power of 3,800 of the bombs set off on Hiroshima simultaneously. Even though it was officially named as RDS-220 hydrogen bomb, the Tsar Bomba got the nickname by the West in contrast to the analogy of two other massive Russian objects, the Tsar Bell and the Tsar Cannon. Recently, the Russian government released footage of this test that the world had never before seen. Here you get a better glimpse into the raw power this device had. The nuclear test led to increasing political tensions between the Soviet Union and the United States. Before the test on 1st of September 1961, the three-year-long nuclear testing moratorium was broken. Fast forward to 16 months later, both the countries had conducted more than 16 nuclear tests, which caused a spike in global radiation levels. Moreover, it also fueled the political tensions to a very critical extent, and that too, before the Cuban Missile Crisis. Considering the massive yield of power displayed by Tsar Bomba, the bomb secured its spot in the Guinness Book of Records as the most powerful thermonuclear device to have ever passed the nuclear test. Being the first in the series of high-yield thermonuclear weapon tests, Castle Bravo was the first test conducted by the US at Bikini Atoll as part of the Operation Castle. The bomb was tested on 1st of March 1954 and was the first ever lithium deuteride fueled nuclear weapon. Upon explosion, the power borne was a monstrous 15 megatons, 2.5 times the predicted 6 megatons. The reason for the unexpected yield of power was due to the unforeseen additional reactions from the lithium-7. This led to the unforeseen radioactive emission that contaminated even the areas to the east of Bikini Atoll. By the time Castle Bravo was tested, it was regarded as the most powerful artificial explosion in nuclear testing history. The heaviest of the fallout due to the detonation was in the form of milled surface coral that even reached the parts of Rongelap and Uteric Atolls. Moreover, the more gaseous and particulate fallout spread across the globe. One of the most unfortunate aspects of this particular nuclear testing was the residents of the islands were not evacuated until after the third day of the explosion, which caused them to suffer from radiation sickness. Additionally, 23 crew members of the Daigo Fukuru Maru, a Japanese fishing vessel, were also contaminated by the heavy fallout. The consequences had them experiencing acute radiation syndrome. The Castle Bravo is regarded as one of those nuclear tests that incited international reaction over atmospheric thermonuclear testing.
The Bainbury Underground Test was conducted on 18th of December 1970 by the United States at the Nevada test site. This nuclear device was approximately 10 kilotons, and even though it was detonated at 270 meters below the surface, it yielded a massive cloud of radioactive dust. Since it was banned to carry out nuclear testing in an open atmosphere after the Partial Test Ban Treaty carried out in 1963, this was one of the first nuclear tests which led to a massive cloud to be observed as far away as Las Vegas. As per the details mentioned in a report produced by the National Cancer Institute, the Bainbury test was recorded to have released approximately 80,000 curies of radioactive iodine-131. The results also concluded that the yield was more than any other US underground nuclear test, even if compared to a smaller atmospheric nuclear test. The radioactive dust emitted during the explosion reached around 3 kilometers in height and was carried into several adjacent US states through the wind. Moreover, the fallout was also observed to have rained down locally, affecting 86 workers present at the testing site. Even though it was reported by the US Department of Energy that none of the workers were harmed due to the fallout, two of them passed away four years later from leukemia. The widows of the deceased took action and filed lawsuits against the US government to seek justice. Later, in 1996, one of the US Court of Appeals found evidence that revealed the negligence from the government's end. However, it was concluded that the cancer was not due to the fallout from the Bainbury test. The Starfish Prime nuclear test was conducted on 9th of July 1962 by the United States as one of the five nuclear tests to conclude their effects in high altitudes. The explosion took place 400 kilometers above the Johnston Atoll and was reported to have yielded approximately 1.45 megatons of power. This was almost a hundred times more than that of the Hiroshima bomb. The nuclear testing event was conducted during the peak times of the Cold War and was shortly piloted after the Tsar bomber test by the Soviet Union. Shortly after the Starfish Prime, the world found itself on the brink of nuclear war during the Cuban Missile Crisis. One of the Starfish Prime nuclear test agendas was to experiment with the Van Allen belts, which are the radiation belts in the Earth's magnetosphere. This test resulted in a momentary variation in the intensity and shape of the lower Van Allen belt that led to creating an artificial aurora borealis that could easily be viewed across the Pacific Ocean, from New Zealand to Hawaii. The impact this blast had was much larger than expected. In fact, it pushed much of the instrumentation used to measure the blast off the scale. The EMP effect caused electrical damage in parts of Hawaii, over 900 miles away from the blast point. Due to the unintended fallout and dangers associated with this test, it was the last of its kind to occur in space. On 19th of July 1957, the John nuclear test was conducted by the United States at the Nevada test site. The test was carried out using an aircraft that fired an air-to-air -air missile and was specifically intended to defend against air attacks with nuclear weapons. These aircraft were positioned during the 1950s by the United States to counter the Soviet bomb attacks and were decommissioned during the year 1986. The nuclear-tipped missile used to carry out the test had a rated explosive power of 2 kilotons and blew up after a flight of a few seconds, around 5 kilometers from ground level. One of the most bewildering parts of this nuclear test was to run a public advertisement campaign that depicted a unique idea. It was intended to portray that the nuclear air defense modeled minimalistic risks to those present on the ground. To prove their argument, five of the US servicemen volunteered to discern the effects of the explosion by being present right underneath the blast at a safe distance. This nuclear test was included as part of the Operation Plum Bob, the purpose of conducting a series of 24 nuclear detonations and six safety tests that were carried out from April to October 1957. The rocket is gone. We felt a heat pulse, a very bright light, a fireball. It is red. The sky looks black about it. It is boiling above us there. It is rapidly losing its color. There is the ground wave. It is over.
While the nuclear powers across the globe are constantly investing their time and resources to develop deadly weapons of mass destruction, it's high time we realised that the world we live in requires peace and prosperity more than anything. What do you think should be practised by the leaders of the world to contribute towards peace? Let us know in the comments section down below. To see more videos just like this one, be sure to click the link on screen now. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.